Okay, so tonight I am going to show you how to build a really simple website using the Google Cloud. And we will actually start by going to a domain registrar of your choice. Um, I'm using GoDaddy in this case. I, I would actually prefer to use Google Domains, uh, which is in a beta round testing. Um, but I've already used my one domain, and I, I at the moment I can't. Uh, purchase any more domains there so we'll go we'll just use GoDaddy so I'm actually going to cheat a little bit here because I have previously purchased this one uh, domain I can assure you it's it's not a difficult process um, you do need to go and um, you know make sure that that the domain you choose is available and there's a whole science and art to that um, but you know we're just assuming that, you, that you've already done that so we're gonna use this one called clank it I'm not currently doing anything with this site um, so if we launch we'll see some of the basic uh, setup of, of this domain um, and if I take you to a new tab what you'll see is basically the default GoDaddy parked page um, so a as you register a new domain through GoDaddy this, this is essentially what you see um, so we can close that out for now um, and now what I'm going to do at the moment is I am now going to launch the Google Cloud and you do this simply by going in your browser to cloud.google.com and when we come over here um, I'm actually already authenticated so I, I have some features available uh, but if I click into this go to my console you'll see that um, you know I'm, I, I'm now immediately taken to this Google developers console um, and it shows my available projects um, <clears throat> I'm not gonna create a new project right now but you, you know you you can actually do that it's it's a pretty simple process you, you know you actually just go to this create project button um, and then what you do is just um, then click into that project that you've created after you've named it and now we're really inside the heart of the Google Cloud um, and now what we're looking to accomplish here is um, we want to launch a new server or instance as it's referred to in the cloud uh, and this instance is going to be the basis for our site so I want to click into this VM instances section and these initial stats you're seeing are just our um, uh, stats of what's been going on with the sites that you know with with the instances that that I've been running previously so I'm gonna click into VM instances and you'll see um, I should have one instance in here yeah I have this launch NJ website instance um, I'm actually hosting a number of sites there um, and very easily I could I could tack this clank it domain on to this running instance that I have and and you know the setup would be very easy uh, but I want to show you you know doing this from scratch so what we'll do is we will click new instance uh, let's see here and we'll name it so it's memorable um, firewall um, we want to allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic um, that is basically the, uh, you know, that, that that is the protocol of the web. Uh, so if we do, if we don't allow HTTP traffic, uh, you know, we will not be able to serve a website on, uh, you know, on this instance. So we we enable that. Um, you get to this is pretty cool. You get to pick where you want to place your instance. Uh, we're gonna put put this in U.S. Central One A. Uh, which is where my other machine is. Um, here we choose the machine type. Um, you know, obviously, the more powerful you get here, uh, the the more you're going to pay. We're basically just going to use a, a micro instance, which 
uh, for a situation like this where you know where we're just running a, a very small site it's actually completely adequate uh, so I'm just gonna click on that and boot source so new disk from image uh, this means we're you know we're, we're, we're going in with a fresh start um, and let's just pick this very first one here it's it's a uh, Debian 7 Wheezy build, which is a, a flavor of, of Linux. Uh, you can see this Debian GNU Linux. Um, so I will click that. Standard persistent disk, that, that's fine for what we're doing. The, you know, the SSD um, solid state drive could get us a little bit slightly better performance, but we'll just go with the default. Um, network default, that's fine. External IP, we're not concerned at the moment about um, locking down an IP for a significant amount of time, so we'll just, e ephemeral is actually okay. Ephemeral meaning uh, short-lived, but you know, in this case, it's, it, it's fine for what we're doing for this demo. Okay, so now that instance is spinning up. You can see this. Um, uh, this uh, you know this this timer over here uh, letting me know that this instance is is being prepared for us and in a minute yep there we go great that's now available so we have this instance clank it um, external IP okay so this is now immediately how we are going to access this this instance from the web so this actually is out there on the web, and, and um, it's somewhat accessible, uh, be, you know, because we opened that hole in the firewall. But we're actually not going to be able to do anything with it just yet. That and that is actually expected. Um, the first thing is that it it's not running a web server at the moment. So we now need to. What we're going to do now is connect to this instance. So you see over here this connect. And we're going to go into um, S, you know, SSH connection. Um, this will launch an SSH session that will take us to our newly created instance. Um, and we are now at the com command line of this server. Um, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to issue a command called sudo su. And what this does is this this actually allows me to change um, the the user that I'm that I'm uh, you know authenticated to this this site as. So uh, you can see on, on this left side over here, uh, you know this this initial account. Once I issue this sudo command, I, I should get root access. And the reason we want that is because the root access is you know the administrator for the box. And we need admin rights to do some of the things that we're going to have to do. So, simple sudo su command. You'll now see that we have this root level access. That's that's what we want. Um, let's just change to the absolute base. Okay. And the first thing we need to do is we need we need to put a web server on, uh, you know, on on this instance. And so there's a thing called we're going to use what's called Apache 2. Um, and so in Debian, we can issue a command like this. It's apt get um, install Apache 2. Oh, sorry. One second. I need to run an update first. No, update. OK. So we need to run this initial update process. Um, it goes and just gets you know the, the latest version of all the default packages. Um, you know, it, uh, all, all the um, all, all the updates since uh, you know since this uh, this image that Google's made available had um, you know had, has been made available. It's 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 all those instances. Uh, sorry, all all those updates. And so what we need to do now. Now, after we've run the update, we can now um, install Apache. Okay. Just confirm that. Yes. Okay. 
So that's installing. And that's great. And you'll see here, so th this is a good, this is a very good sign here. Okay, starting web server. So Apache is now actually started. And you may not have noticed before, but, um, oh, sorry, now I wasn't in the right directory. Okay, so if we go here, um, this default is actually this www directory. And um, that gets, you know, that, that directory gets created when, when Apache is installed. Uh, so Apache is now up and running. So if we actually go back to uh, this IP address for the site, we should now see a page. Yes, perfect. Okay. So we are now up on the internet. Um, okay, so now that we have a site up and running, uh, what we now need to do is pop back over to our domain registrar and have that point to this IP address. So, uh, you know, again, th this is actually public on the internet now, but it's obviously not a friendly name. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to connect our, um, our domain name to that IP address. And what we do is at least in GoDaddy, um, we go over to this tab for you know DNS zone file. So basically, th um, th there should be a similar you know action in in whatever registrar you're on. Um, if you're on GoDaddy, this is you know the, this this is the literal um, thing that you need to do. So what we'll do is edit this record, okay? Um, and I will take this IP address and paste that into this section uh, just IP address okay um, hopefully I can reduce this no it will not let me okay so this time to live uh, this oh, save changes this this TTL value here is actually it's it's time to live um, it determines how long different servers, different routers out on the internet will wait until they check to see if the location of, uh, you know, the, this host name of, of this domain name uh, has changed. You know, it, the, these DNS settings have changed. So we're actually going to have to wait a little while. What that means is we're going to have to wait a little while for this um, uh, you know, for this change to go through. So if I go back to that domain now, um, most likely nothing will have happened yet. Oh, never mind. <laughs> so that is actually up, uh, and we are now connected to our server. Um, so, you know, this domain name is now pointing to that IP address, so now we have a friendly way of you know of getting to this location. Um, that is now actually a very rudimentary website. You know, this is actually uh, running on the Google Cloud. Um, th th this is a legitimate website. Um, you know, the next steps we need to do is obviously build a much more robust website. Uh, we could choose to install WordPress here at this location. Um, we can upload any files that we'd like to upload. We can, you know, we can modify this this index file. So, for example, if I just make a quick change to the index.html, I'll issue this nano command. Um, let me just make a really small change. Okay, save that. And if I reload, you'll see an updated website. Uh, so that's basically it. Um, you know, in the next tutorial, we'll we'll run into uh, creating a much more robust website. Uh, but this is, you know, basically the simplest website you know you can possibly put together. Okay, that's it.